What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Today's video is the final installment in the three act story structure story beat breakdown series, which I've been posting since February. Wow, it's been quite a journey. If you missed the entire series, you can check it out right here. But I'm going to assume that you've been following along with the series and you are ready to write an epic climax. We actually have three story beats to cover in this video because they all kind of flow together as part of the ending climax sequence. So we're just gonna cover it all right here, right now. First, we're going to debunk some common writing myths about the climax. Then we're going to look at the brain science behind what makes a climax exciting and engaging. Roll that intro and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. You know why most writers fail to create a gripping, riveting, memorable climax that leaves you on the edge of your seat? Because most writers are too focused on making the climax exciting. Yep, you heard that right. Exciting. They're trying so hard to make the climax exciting, they end up doing just the opposite. They write a climax that nobody cares about. They believe that in order to engage the reader, you need to have a bunch of thrilling, flashy, scary stuff happening. They believe that adrenaline is the cause, not the effect of the reader's interest. And they inadvertently tell every contemporary writer ever Hey, your climax is not gonna be interesting or exciting unless you have car chases and spaceships blowing up. All of this is simply not true. Would you be surprised if I told you that so many writers have fundamentally misunderstood story? So many writers think that story begins and ends with what happens. They confuse plot for story and their novels and screenplays suffer as a result. Not you, you know what's up. You know our motto here on this channel. Story is not about what happens, it's about how what happens affects and transforms the characters. Otherwise, everyone would be writing exciting genres like action adventure, sci-fi, or military thriller. Like if external conflict and action were the secret ingredients to a successful story, everyone would be writing that. But they're not, why? because external conflict just makes your mirror neurons fire, as if these events are happening to you. I'm sure you've seen lots of science fiction adventures that are filled with action and exploding spaceships, but they have no real story. And you've probably seen a lot of simple, everyday life, character-driven stories that were so compelling and emotional, you never forgot them. Well then, maybe the secret ingredient is something else. Maybe it's something that we overlooked because we didn't think it was exciting enough. Maybe it's internal conflict. If I made a super cut of all the time I've spent on this channel talking about internal conflict, <laughs> it would probably be like 17 hours long. <laughs> Why do I talk about internal conflict so much? Because it is what makes your story matter. It's what makes your climax matter. You can't raise the stakes until we know what the stakes are and why they matter to the characters. The stakes cannot be the same for every character. If they are, then you've got a plot-driven story on your hands and a protagonist that could be easily swapped out with any of your side characters. The stakes also can't simply be do or die because again, you're falling back on those mirror neurons. Don't do that. You don't want your reader thinking, how would I feel if that was me? Rather, you want them thinking, how would I feel if I was them? Sounds like the same thing, but it's actually a huge difference. You're looking for that deeper empathy, not just a momentary biological reaction to an action sequence that we're gonna forget 10 minutes from now. Okay, Abby, but how do you raise the stakes if there's no life or death situation? Oh, there can be a life or death situation, but I'm inviting you to go beyond that. Find the internal conflict and let that take center stage. How bad? 
bad! I need immediate medevac! You raise the stakes by clearly defining what this climax means to the protagonist. It will be different for every character, of course, and that's why it's so vital to define the limits of your character's comfort zone preferably on page one, because that's how we measure the importance of everything in the whole story. I am her mother. You have never been, and you never will be my mother. I'm not saying there can't be life or death situations. I'm just saying that even a story without a life or death situation can still be super climactic and engaging and exciting. But before we go into that, let's take a look at the description of the climax in the three-act story structure. Climactic confrontation. Protagonist faces their biggest challenge yet. This is the moment everyone has been waiting for, where the protagonist is going to face their most difficult challenge yet. It's a true test of their character, and how they respond to the confrontation is the proof that they've transformed as a result of their journey. So your protagonist has already won the internal battle in their aha moment, but now it's time for them to win the external battle, which of course will force them to face off with their greatest fears. Prompt, ask yourself, how does my protagonist prove their transformation by crushing their misbelief and facing their greatest fear with courage? So what does this look like in your story? Well, it depends on what genre you're writing. If you're writing one of those more action-packed genres, your climax will probably look like a big showdown between the protagonist and the antagonist or a battle between two armies. I remember. This is the way Mufasa looked before he died. Just remember who you are, you wretch. But remember, this is not about what's happening on the surface. It's really about what matters to your protagonist. And that is how you can make a contemporary just as climactic as a fantasy. I write contemporary all the time, and this is one of my favorite things to do, is figure out how can I build tension within a very small, very simple premise to the point where I have my reader on the edge of their seat. It's a challenge sometimes, but it's a good challenge because it'll make you a better writer and it will make your story matter, not only to your characters, but to the reader and beyond that, to the world. So if you're a contemporary writer, don't worry your climax can still be climactic. Your character can still face an intimidating challenge that forces them to prove their transformation. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love, I love, I love you. If you can make your reader care about your character, if you can get them emotionally attached to your character, they'll be interested in seeing anything that happens to that character, whether they're fighting an intergalactic battle with a formidable antagonist, or they're professing their love for their sworn enemy in a romantic field at sunrise. Because at the end of the day, we really don't care what happened. We care about who it happened to. I know a real gun when I see one. After the climactic confrontation, you know what happens next. Victory! Protagonist overcomes. This doesn't necessarily mean the protagonist wins the external battle or that things turn out exactly how they hoped. But the protagonist does experience a personal victory because they overcame their fear and destroyed their misbelief. Here's my rule of thumb. If your reader doesn't know how the character has transformed as a result of their journey, you need to rewrite your book until they do. Prompt. Ask yourself, how has my protagonist changed as a result of their journey? No, your protagonist doesn't have to live happily ever after, but they should come to the realization that their misbelief has been wrong this whole time. The protagonist does have to change as a result of their journey. That's what makes a character arc powerful. That's what makes a story memorable. No, Scar. I'm not like you. Please! I want to live again. I forgive you. I personally love happy endings. Like if I read a book that's like kind of, it's like, okay, it's not that great, but it has a really happy ending. I will probably give that book an extra star just because it made me happy. <laughs> but obviously not all stories can have happy endings. Sometimes it's just too late to make things 
right. But that can be a thought-provoking theme in and of itself, one that might even change the lives of your readers. But regardless of the tone you take at the end of your story, you must show the reader how the character has changed. Otherwise, why did anything matter? Okay, final, final story beat that's kinda optional. Resolution, wrapping up loose ends. This is the part where all the loose ends are tied up. The reader should be left with no missing information or silent questions. If the book is part of a series, then you may want to end on a cliffhanger by swapping out the victory story beat with another plot twist. If the book is a standalone, make sure the reader's questions are answered when they reach the final page. Prompt. Ask yourself, where will my protagonist go from here? What does their life look like now that they have overcome their misbelief? I say this part is optional because it really depends on the style of your story. Sometimes I like abrupt endings that allow you to paint the rest of the picture yourself. Other times I like to allude to the future. You could do this with an epilogue if that's your thing, but I prefer to do just a little bit of hinting, usually in dialogue, to what will likely happen in the future for these characters. The thing about epilogues is they kind of limit your options. What if later you decide to write a sequel? Well, now you can't because you told the rest of their story in the epilogue. So I would recommend finding that balance between satisfying your reader and also leaving them hungry for more. Worst case, they're mad at you for leaving it too open-ended and you can just tell them to go write Fan fiction. <laughs> okay, let's recap everything we just went over. Most writers fail to craft a dramatic climax because they're too focused on making the climax exciting. But external conflict, the plot, is nothing without internal conflict, the story. If a dramatic life or death situation was the secret ingredient to a good climax, everyone would be writing this, but it's not. Internal conflict is the secret ingredient. Raise the stakes by clearly defining what this climax means to your protagonist. Find the internal conflict and let that take center stage in your climax. Remember, this is the biggest challenge your protagonist must overcome, and how they face it will be the proof of their transformation. No antagonist to defeat? No problem. Contemporaries can be just as nerve-wracking as thrillers. If you make your reader care deeply about your protagonist, they'll be desperate to know what happens next. If your reader doesn't know how the protagonist has transformed as a result of their journey, you need to rewrite your book until they do. Your protagonist doesn't necessarily have to win the battle and live happily ever after, but they must change as a result of their journey. How they overcome their biggest challenge, the climax, is the proof that they have crushed their misbelief once and for all. Ask yourself, how does my protagonist prove their transformation by crushing their misbelief and facing their greatest fear with courage? How has my protagonist changed as a result of their journey? Where will my protagonist go from here? What does their life look like now that they have overcome their misbelief? Okay, boom, that's it. That's literally it. <laughs> if you just finished watching this entire series and you've been writing your novel along with it, can I just give you a high five? Because you're awesome. I hope it has been inspiring. I hope it has been insightful. I hope it has revolutionized the way you look at story structure and story in general and your story, that beautiful masterpiece that you're crafting right now. Remember to grab my three act story structure template that is linked below this video. You can also get bonus materials from this series, including all of my recap notes from the end of each video, as well as the detailed three act story structure of my book, 100 Days of Sunlight. All of that is available in the Writer's Life Wednesday resource hub, which you can get access to when you join my Patreon at any level. So if you're interested in getting those bonus goodies, head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Smash that like button if you liked this series and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.